Yeah, I've got, an, I've got, I've got a, a famous passenger in my car. Hello, welcome to Cortina City, Project Ruby, episode 35. I've got a little porcelain house. Well, as, as the intro says, welcome to 35, this milestone engine start film where we get a, a double whammy hit and a choo-choo train at the crossing. Is it going to be a pacer? A class 34, what will we get when the lights go down? It doesn't look like it's going to happen. I need a choo-choo train. I need those lights to flash. It's a fail. It's a fail. Wow, just looking in my rear view mirror, the, the lights just changed as I went over the crossing by seconds. We mean, it looked like a, a pacer class. It, uh, yeah, I just missed it. Okay, yeah, so a, a double welcome for 35. The intro there. I'm straight in, so I'll tell you what I've just done. Just before the camera started to roll or roll, we put on the starter motor. After checking all the torque, settings on the flywheel and then talking, uh, connecting up the um, torque converter to the flex plate with the four bolts we've turned that rotated it around and unlocked them on so that's all in now we can put the start motor in found the dug out the engine bell housing bolts got them on so the bell housing is nice and secure okay we've got that on so that takes the gearbox to where we want to be this side securing strap that fits these are unique to auto as I just found out of course that is for manual and it goes on the other side this is where the starter motor would be on a manual so this bracket is designed for the other side so basically you've got to use that I had this powder coated that one's quite clean that's the one that come with the Granada luckily got that off otherwise I've been making a bracket for there I think we're all done there. We've got an earth strap on there and some of the electrics and batteries are getting ready to be connected up to the, the dash so we can fire it. But before we do anything like that, we want to put the Dextron 2 into the actual gearbox itself so we get ourselves our funnel over here, the funnel. And hold on, let's get it connect to that. Into there, filling spout. We're ready now to put six litres of the amber nectar in to the box, Dextron 2. I'm just going to go and check my specs. Then I think you've got to turn it over a little bit, let the torque converter gobble some up, then go for a bit more. So we pour in our fluid now. Let's do that. Whoops, a little too fast there. We've got a cloth, don't worry. See, it takes it pretty quick actually. It's because I was looking at the camera then. It takes it quicker than you'd expect. You'd think that that'd take ages to fill up, but it actually goes in real quick. That was four litres. Because I'd already used some of that on one of our power steering pumps on one of the vans at work. So. We need a little bit more in, but it's going to keep the wolf from the door for now. On the gearbox, I'll put the dipstick in and just see where it's up to. Hold on. Right, we are showing just above max on that. But oh, it's got to take the fluid into the uh, torque converter. It'll only do that when you actually start spinning it up. Alright, so we're okay. We're in the zone. We'll keep our eye on that level. There's our nice galvanized uh, dipstick set up there so we've got two pipes here which 
send the fluid round to the radiator. Well, we've, got the ra we've got the radiator pipe, so what we're going to do, we're going to get the rad on this jig now. I'm going to bring you down. We're going to we're going to look at the radiator situation. We're going to, we want to get some fluids into the car, so there's no reason why we can't top the car up with water. Okay, and then um, we should be able to start looking for a spark as well, so that'll be exciting. We need to get the coil fitted as well. We're looking for all the essential things. I'm going to bring you down. Come on, let's have another look. Right, what do we need to get this this going? Well, that's a set. Got your pressure pipes. So that's going to circulate oil around the pipes to the radiator to cool it down. You could just put a loop and a turn on, but I want to run it through the rad. The whole point of this is to test things. We've got a vac pipe there, which is a bit too short and needs to get to that vac point. We need to blank that vac for the servo off. We need a coil. We've got no spark yet. We need to look at the power pump situation because I don't want to run that dry, it'll burn it out. We've got a radiator to fit and we've got a temperature sender to fit into the cylinder, otherwise water's going to pour out of the hole where the temp sender goes, which is just in here, temp sender. I've got one somewhere, we'll dig that out. Fuel pipe to connect, that's dead easy. Points to set, that's dead easy, because let's get it something in the zone. And then um, it should go. So, bit by bit, I'll probably do the radiator next. Radiator then. Possible. Is that still going? I'm genuinely shocked. I'm genuinely shocked. I don't. I'm genuinely. I can't believe it. I don't. Hey, it, hey? it hasn't even got the fuel. We have the. It, I am. I've got smacked. I, I'm seriously. I, what? What? But the fuel's only just got. It's the fuel's only just sucked up that pipe. He hasn't, he hasn't, he couldn't have even got through there. How the hell could the fuel get in the carburetor? The carburetor is dry. He couldn't have even done it. It, it was only up to there and it fired. I don't, I don't, mm. you, you just generally shocked the hell out of me. <laughs> Whoa, whoa, I'm glad you caught that on camera. Well, you just caught Ricky on the camera. <laughs> caught me right out that dish. I'm glad you, you got because we weren't going to have that running. That the, 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 <laughs> the film was, we were just, just priming it ready. Um, I mean, even the tickle, I haven't even, I don't understand it. Look. You just heard Ruby's engine fire for the first time and we weren't really set for doing that yet. It was just, we were just priming the petrol in it and getting everything lined up and ready, making sure the fuel pump was on. Um, I've connected up the coil. I, I did it the, uh, the timing on the dizzy. Um, but we just threw it in on top dead centre, just twist the dizzy till you get a spark on plug, plug one. And then uh, that's something like, but I didn't expect it to fire. I mean, that's ridiculous. I can't believe that I fired that quick. That's ridiculous. Right, guys, you'll find the engine has gone. We've dragged it outside or we've wheeled it out through our removable door here. So no engine because the fumes, we cannot afford to have the uh, fumes build up in the workshop. Very dangerous for carbon monoxide, plus any exhaust paints and engine block paints and things that are going to be burning off going to make for some very horrible fumes and we're not fitted with extraction and system in here it was never built that way so we've got to really play it safe and do it in the open open space so engine out the casters collapsed on the block I'll show you what I mean on the on the jig I'll show put some new ones on let's go outside and have a look at it 
here we go outside to have a look at our engine so just a uh, little trip across the floor these were made for walking that's what they're gonna do just just here we're now ready for water okay so new casters if one's collapsed they were no use just not up to the kilogram weight or whatever you want to call it so i belted these ones on where the other stub casters were slightly heavy heavier duty and easy to maneuver the other ones were just binding up and seemed wrong you saw it fire we're going to refire it again but now we've put all the hoses on so we can get some water and i'm going to put some antifreeze in as well just to uh, keep it coolant with the right properties i don't want to, I want to start as i mean to go on I know I'll be draining it again, but I'll put a little bit in. I'll just feel better. Our dipstick, our torque converter has took up the fluid and dropped a good quart into the torque converter itself, dropping the level on the dipstick just to half, so we're good we're good there. Don't really know what the gearbox is up to yet. We think it's all spinning up. Power steering pump's dry, so we're gonna keep our eyes on that. Other than that, we're ready to do a, a more sustained test now temperature gauge has been connected we needed that to fill it up with water so there's our temp gauge just in there and that connects to the dials on the front so you've got temperature there oil pressure our volts amps may not be connected not sure but I can get an idea if we're charging off this volt indicator as well as that one off on for ignition there and you start switch that you saw our ballast is just down here now I'm going to just quickly talk you through ballasts so you've got an idea what it's all about we talk about ballast resistors in your ignition setup I'm on a standard points and plug setup here's our coil this is what's called a ballasted coil it's designed to work off 9 volts although it can accept 12 volts for a very short period of time it's um, running nicely at 9 volts it runs at 9 volts because the 12 volt feed goes through this ballast and that drops the current down and um, runs it at 9 volts certainly reduces the current to about 1.5 to 3 ohms resistance coiled up in a, a wire like this that's normally fitted in your engine bay so the purpose of that is to stop the coil burning out now you might say well, why don't you just fit a 12 volt coil and connect 12 volts to it and not have any ballast well what happens when you crank the engine is the voltage across the battery and so across the coil drops below 12 sometimes 8 volts sometimes 9 volts when you're cranking heavy especially in the cold so that would mean that a 12 volt coil when you're cranking it isn't going to be able to produce the spark it would normally be able to make a nice meaty spark because you're cranking your engine and you're dropping your power across the whole system your lights will dim you'll notice when you start your car your lights dim down just a little bit your headlights that's because that starter motor is drawing all the current so your coil would be then a 12 volt coil would then only be running on 9 volts as you only when you're cranking of course you'd be all right if you weren't cranking you could use it so if you bump start your car you could do it so what they did was they used a 9 volt coil going through a ballast to make the 12 become 9 volts or it's really reducing the current but to, in simple terms and then what happens when you crank it it actually just links out the ballast by having the, another wire on the starter motor here's the starter motor connections that's the one to actually fire the starter motor ignore that this one here this just goes straight to the coil without going through the ballast so okay you're cranking you've only got nine volts it's a nine volt coil this supplies straight to it missing out the ballast if this was to go through the ballast then you'd only have about six volts at your coil so this just goes straight to the ballast when cranking when you're not cranking this solenoid's disengaged and this wire's then not active so that's how it works um, it's all to do with uh, cranking volts and amps and stuff alternators on and alternators connected so we should get charge as well the uh, alternator light should go out we've got the alternator light there and uh, this is just an ignition light oil pressure we monitor on here so we're ready to put some water in now and give it a more sustained run so ruby pinto engine 
testing. Okay, we've got water in, and the stat has opened, sending the hot water stat housing there is open, sending the hot water around. We've got this, there was a bit of air lock in it, which we had to release. Just the air lock released around the, uh, the thermostat for the, the uh, automatic choke pipes. Just normally you've got your your heater matrix going through there, and you normally just loosen one of them pipes as you fill your engine. Um, blanked off the vacuum inlet pipes there for the servo and for the automatic gearbox advance no leaks uh, nothing coming out I can't see any oil anywhere no auto fluid either no water leaks yet we're not pressurized though we're going to put the cap on now and pressurize up and that will test uh, whether there's any uh, leaks in the water system we don't anticipate anything but it's time to pressure check now but initially looking very good on Ruby's engine build looking great ladies and gentlemen maybe a little bit um, maybe a little bit tappy perhaps but that's only our first take on the valves we'll probably be redoing clearances on those yeah so it is tapping a bit doesn't worry me too much ready to cap on ready to start again start nicely looks like the Weber carb came all set up we know that uh, auto chokes working because look how the uh, choke flaps have now opened up because the hot water has gone over this coil here and open them up there's a bimetallic wound spring in here which when it gets hot enlarges and pulls a lever which opens these flaps that's your auto choke that's working good timing seems all right let's switch on let's start up again okay taking you across for pressure test Okay, temperature's holding good, right in the middle there, we're doing okay on the temperature. Going to give it a little rev now, volts are right, quite high, we'll get a volt gauge on there, we're not, uh, we're in the red, so we're quite high on the volts, so we'll have to just keep our eye on that uh, alternator and make sure there's nothing wrong there, we're quite high in the, uh, the range there, 
we'll get a voltmeter out and just see what that's throwing but it's probably 14 volts actually it's just under the 15 So a rev now, let's just try to uh, talk a bit louder, a rev now, As you can see now, the auto choke has we've got a rattling bracket there. Now the auto choke disengages that disengages the tick over revs. And we're now going down to probably 300, 400 RPM. So we get a flat blade screwdriver now. And we adjust our tick over revs. The auto choke disengages once you give it the first blip of the throttle. So we need a little bit more adjustment. I'm going to switch off. We switch off. Okay, yeah, so when I gave that throttle blip, because the auto choke had finished its operation, it then requires you to give it one blip to disengage the, the auto uh, choke um, revs, tick over revs, which are just located through here. Uh, sorry, no, that's the main tick over there. There they are, just underneath, coming up. Uh, we are, with a little adjusting screw, the, the fuel air mixture screw, trying to find that. Here we are for also revs just under there. So that was all right. We just need the idle revs. This screw here. Now you've got harsh sunlight outside. I can do this here. Oh, that's better light for you. Sorry about the, the jerky camera action there. We're going to turn this just to get the RPM. Now really, I could do with an RPM gauge. I'm surprised I haven't fitted one. Why the hell I haven't done that? Everything else. Start up. Okay, so we just need to get it just a little bit, something like that for now, so we're ticking over nice. So there's a few fine tuning, this is just the first initial setup, so there's plenty we can play with with it, we just wanted to make sure there's nothing drastic wrong. I'm going to go and make a few checks now, and I'm also going to move you into a better lighting position, okay? Hold on for that better lighting position. We're going to take another dipstick reading because we expect fluid to have and it has, it's just on minimum now so a top up required on the auto box there's plenty gone in but it needs some more we could uh, engage the gear and see if we get a rotation, we should do we get some uh, Dextron 2 now let that settle a little bit and we'll go around and have a real close examination see if we can spot anything um, I'm being wary of pressurised pipes. Systems now pressurised, so that's hot and and uh, stiff to the touch, which means it's got pressure in it. So this is where we have to be really careful that uh, all hose clips are on, because you could just find that it'll just slide straight off there, and you're going to get absolutely scalded. So you be real careful at this point. And as I said, you've got to be working outside um, because the fumes. You can see some stickers burning off on the exhaust. I should have really got those off. <coughs> Excuse me, <coughs> some fumes. <coughs> I just uh, frogging my throat there. As uh, fumes are subsiding now, a bit of paint burning off, everything is starting to bed in. Exciting stuff. We have the fire extinguisher on the front just in case. Don't forget, you've got fuel canister there. We're ready with a fire extinguisher, two fire extinguishers actually. Um, looking for any oil leaks or anything like that so I'm going to go down to eye level now I'm going to get the little chair so we can sit and watch the engine
guys, I've let the engine cool down and um, now I'm just doing another fire up test from cold but this time we've loosened off the distributor body so we can slightly rotate it and I'm going to aim, aim for a more uh, steady tick over we haven't got the timing light with us today because we weren't expecting to get this far but by just rotating slightly on the uh, distributor here we can uh, turn it till we get a better sound just for now and then we'll do some more high revs and just see what we get so we're straight in there sounding good all right and then here we go for a rev Okay, my next mission is to get some fluid in the power steering pump because I don't want to burn it out. It requires fluid to keep itself going. We don't want to damage that. So we've got two pipes here which we're going to loop together um, and get a flow through. I think you can do that with these. The main thing is to get it uh, so it's got fluid in it. Then we're going to do a sustained rev at 2000 RPM, let the cam get some uh, bedding in done. I'm going to leave the engine idling as well, monitor the temperature. We believe that even though there's no ram air going through, uh, the fan should be enough to uh, keep it cool. It may require electrical assistance with the, not being in, with the car not being in motion. Um, I noticed on Swampy you do get, the gauge can get to three quarters when you're in standing traffic without the electric fan. So um, ram air does help, so obviously. We may need to fit an electric fan if we're leaving this ticking over for any length of time, especially at the moment. The weather's suddenly warmed up again, uh, early part of July that we're in at the moment. So, hope you're enjoying the engine startup. It's only a short film, this one, because we just made it a special. 35 is a special. So, uh, just to show you that uh, we got there with the engine. Now, we said we'd engage the box. So, we'll engage the box now, taking great care. Well, as you come down with me now and we'll, um, we'll put the box in drive so let's fire up ok so I'm heading down to the selector lever which is here and we've got park, neutral, reverse and drive so we're already in park so neutral's one click ok now you get a little bit of turn in there In fact, that may be reverse actually. I do apologise. Now neutral. That's reverse. Now we're in neutral. Sorry about that. Uh, right, yeah, that was uh, reverse neutral. Now we're in drive. We're going to need revs to get the spin. There we go. We're off. That's, that's drive. Now you may see on your screen the stroboscopic effect of the shaft as it goes backwards and forwards uh, the frame rate of the camera but well, that's ok so we're going to go back to neutral neutral now then it's going to go reverse now we're going to go back into park we lock and we're locked coming back round for temperature check so temperature holding Oil good, let's see uh, what pressure we get when we rev for the oil. Revving for oil check. A good temperature there. 
a good pressure there, sorry. Voltage is okay. I'm gonna get the gauge and just check that voltage. I think the red light on here is indicating it's okay, it just means engine on, it's not a, an over voltage as I thought. We're okay there. Oh no, it's saying high output, 14 volts, but I think that's okay. We're not hot on the battery, we're not cooking on the battery, that's okay. Don't forget we've got that, there's a problem with that. Just going to check the power simple vein's burning out. Oil coming out of that. So yeah, a lot of those tests are coming back good, gearbox uh, engaging and going in okay. Make sure uh, when you do do your gearbox, I was aware of this, so I was okay, but uh, don't put it into, if you're freewheeling your box like I am, you've got to make sure when you put it into park that it is not still rotating. Normally the motion of the car would stop that from rotating, but it can free rotate and your pole will jump uh, on the gears at the back on the uh, pole catch, so be careful of that. But um, we've not seen any leaks. I've got some overpressure. Uh, ah, I do have my first leak. Here we go. Here's our first leak, and I believe it's the thermostat housing. Let's have a look what we've got. It could just be the top hose isn't secured. It looks like it's just the top hose. This is what it's all about. This is the whole point of the mission. I'd be surprised if that's the gasket. I'm going to say it's just find its way out yet yeah, I can see the steam so this top hose there not quite secure so there's our first little one but you'd expect stuff like that to happen that's not a big game changer we just get the span on that in a minute and nip that up uh, the gearbox levels fine now I've had to put another liter in that's that's gobbling it up down there that's uh, very hungry I like the starter motor it's very positive engagement and uh, really throws the engine round. Listen to how quickly it just kicks it in. Real nice, real nice positive action to the starter motor. The alternator kicks in nice, throws out the volts as we want. We wouldn't want higher than 14.4, so we'll go for the voltmeter now and check the output of the alternator. So, alternator check next, and don't forget, tighten up that hose. And there's our little leak there, just under that hose. thing is I like about those uh, clips, you can get an 8mm and just come and nip them up. Although really you should always set, whoops, what's the end of that? You should always set those so you can get in at a nice angle. So this really wants bringing round to here. So I'll bring that round so you can properly get to it. It's no good there at the front of the radiator. It was obviously fitted before the rad went on. So I don't even think I've tightened that up. Guys, this is actually on upside down, but I'll leave it for now. It wasn't even tight by the way. Um, if you have it inboard there, so this bolt's at the top, you're going to hit the cam cover. So we'll twist it round this way and bring it in. That's better. So nip that up. That's our only hose. I think I've forgotten to tighten, so apologies for that. 
as the pressure began to build in the system it showed up as a little weep so we're okay checking that one do have something on that can't we see that one's not tight this is what it's all about oh no should be better there let's fire up and have a look hey my camcorder lens covers caught on the oil feed pipe okay and here we go again you'll be seeing me doing this quite a lot oh tell you what let's do two in one we'll do two in one bolts on let's just check the state of oh no battery i need a nine volt battery no good oh no digital holder okay it was digital hold sorry about that 20 volts we're on with uh, let's just see what we get we should have around 13.8 volts because this is a, a real healthy battery you've got to bear with me while i try and span my hands enough to because i've not got my crocky clips today i can do this it's got a there you go okay 12 point what we got 12.7 and then i keep the camera rolling for you Ooh. Bear in mind there's no loading on it at all, so it's going to float a little bit high. If we put a load on that, we're going to be 14.4, which is perfect for what we want. Let's check we don't leak anymore now as we start coming towards the end of the film. That's as much as I dare without annoying the neighbours, so because uh, it's six o'clock we'll now shut down. We don't want any get in any trouble. The uh, My work closes at six and that's when we have to shut down any uh, equipment that's making a noise because the bylaws and stuff like that. Anyway, I don't want to piss anyone off. could put the air cleaner on top to hear it running a little bit more quietly now I'll just do that but I won't rev it high okay so air cleaner on to listen to it a little bit more quietly I forgot to mention my exhaust that I made as well on this clip episode 35 there you are just an improvised exhaust coming in uh, back silencer Cortina welded uh, just but welded up there to the middle sa section and then going across that happened to perfectly fit by the way which is just a coincidence so we're good to go on that your cooler pipes loop round here they just getting a little bit warm they're not hot at all so the gearbox isn't doing any work those pipes are just a little bit warm so we know fluid circulating through them uh, yep we're, we're quite well I'll say quite warm I can hold it so uh, not a problem so it's working and because there's no loading on the gearbox it doesn't really generate the heat principally your cooling effects needed when you're towing or going uphill when you're really loading the box uh, idle it shouldn't really uh, need any cooling at all in fact believe it or not they actually need it to be connected to your your radiator in, in colder climates certainly anyway um, the fluid in here if uh, it's very very cold the gearbox doesn't behave uh, tip-top it prefers to be at its preset level 
That was the reason why they uh, let the fluid go into the bottom of the radiator here, which is a cylinder inside the radiator. It's actually not part of the core. It's completely isolated. If you, if you take one apart, which I did, or I got my radiator guy to take it apart for me, just bringing you in now, hoping you can see that at home on YouTube. These uh, connections is where we make the, the hookups for the cooling. Inside the bottom section of the radiator is a cylinder completely independent of the rad itself. Now, okay, if the cylinder failed, water would be introduced to it, but it is thick-walled cylinder. Uh, if you're on top of your maintenance, there's no reason why that should uh, fail at all. People do uh, fit their own coolers on them, that's fine. And the only disadvantage with that is that you don't get the preheat effect, so your gearbox doesn't get up to its correct op operating temperatures in winter time and in cold climates. Uh, so the viscosity changes and you get uh, harsher gear changes. The gearbox likes to be sat at a certain temperature. I'm not sure what that temperature is. I believe it's over 90 degrees when it's happy, but we, we can find that, that out. Um, if you're just running a classic car, typically you'd only be using it uh, in the warmer months of the year, I would imagine. So a cooler at the front's fine, um, but in for winter uh, all year round you would be using uh, be better off if you're uh, actually preheated I think. You may disagree with me on that, that point's open to debate, uh, feel free to comment, let me know what you think about the uh, the cooler situation regarding automatic gearboxes, the great cooler debate. Um, so let us know on the comments, again uh, this part 35, a short film of course, just to get you uh, get a quick injection of uh, engine form into those uh, YouTube arteries because you're all waiting and uh, there was a, a wait for part 34 and now all of a sudden I'm going to whack you over the head with 35 in a double whammy, a double tap okay just so that you've got it because I think an engine start video needs to be a standalone one I didn't jump up and down this time I should have done, shouldn't I? I was so caught out by the fact that it just fired up, you see um, what I was going to say about the fire-up situation, I don't think I quite covered it. Let's just go through it before we close, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go through what happened, talk you through. The last part, 34, left you with me just uh, lining up the torque converter bolts on, onto the flex plate. And we'd, we'd already uh, ARP'd the flex plate up thanks to... Um, Oh, I'm going to thank you your name now on YouTube, I'd have to scroll through. There's a gentleman there uh, left me some helpful comments on Loctite 242, uh, letting me know that it uh, sets in, cures in 10 minutes. Cures, not sets. Cures in 10 minutes. We were in okay for that, just about made it. I was aware that it was starting to cure, so we're okay on that one. Forget your name, sir. I do apologise. I can see you've got glasses on, but I can't picture your name, so I do apologise. I shall go and leave you a comment uh, to accept my apologies for uh, not mentioning you just then, but appreciate sir, the great f feedback tips we're getting in. Another feedback tip, same gentleman, 13 mil bolts, not a 13 mil bolt. The head of the bolt is 13 mil, but I call them 13 mil bolts, and I uh, hope uh, you can forgive me for that. But yeah, it's great to learn, and that's what I love about the YouTube channel because I think that if you allow people to be free to comment on there, that you um, and you're also humble enough to learn then um, people are encouraged to send your feedback without thinking you're going to get offended I don't get offended that's fine even at some of the, the nasty stuff it just I find that as entertainment uh, I actually find it I feel sorry for people who send me bad stuff I uh, pray for them and hope that they get better but all the um, positive, uh, constructive, even negative constructive, because you can have a negative constructive, there's no problem about that, we can get philosophical if you want, philosophy is another thing which I do love studying, but that's a separate thing altogether now, isn't it? We thank uh, everybody for watching again, I'm going to just carry on telling you what happened with this, we got that on, we talked about those bolts, okay they're not 13, so that's good, I'm glad I've learnt, we got the starter motor on, all right, then we um, we were hoping the starter motor was going to nicely engage with the torque converter and that the torque converter had pulled its few mil forward as it drew it onto the flex plate so everything was in line and that is working. We know the gearbox works because we've engaged the gears there. We're paying careful attention not to let it freewheel too, too much and we can see that it's engaging. So we know this thing's going to drive, there's no doubt about that. We haven't checked the kick down or the... Uh, the change down pipe, it's blanked off, there's no need to do that till it's in the car. 
fuel pump works a treat distributors working good we've twisted that in and got the settings a little bit right just by ear just so that the tick over is smoother there's our pcv valve that needs a little a tap on it but it is working it's okay um, carburetor's all fine, auto choke's engaging and we're not sure about the mixture but it seems alright, we can check the mixture. We did that, we had these things lined up, I had the spark plugs all gapped when I was fitting them. Um, I checked the firing order which on a Pinto is 1, 4, 3, 2, okay, so we set that, spark plug 1, spark plug 4, spark plug 3, spark plug 2. We knew that the rotor was pointing this way when the wheel was at top dead centre down here. We'd made sure we'd line the cam up with its pointer wheel on the block of the cam and that the uh, piston was at top dead centre when the uh, cam sprocket wheel pointer was pointing at the little dot on the front, so all that was in line. We then fitted the tam uh, cam belt and then so that we can get just get that twist there like that for our tension. If you can twist it anymore, it's a, it wants a little bit more on it. There's our new pulley tensioner wheel that was tensioned up on the spring system seems to have worked then we locked that tight there so that was the engine synchronized with the uh, camshaft we did the follower gaps you saw um, and all the setting of, up of the cam and we checked that the spray bar was operational so we knew we'd get a good delivery of oil we'd already primed the engine using the electric drill when there was no belt attached to spin the oil pump up we um, we'd nipped up all the bolts okay we've loctited everything that we had to then you got us to part 35 where I was putting the fuel pipe on having done all that letting the fuel come through this pipe here now that was bone dry and I was only watching the fuel coming up like this but thinking back there must have been traces of fuel at, ahead of the main line of fuel that I could see and I think that that got in there and very quickly got into the carb now there's the float chamber just coming up underneath here that must have quickly filled and before we knew it, the engine had fired up. Um, I was going to set up on a cam, uh, a tripod and just say, right, here we go. But because it just caught me out, I decided just to keep that original clip there of it firing up. And I've just uh, gone round now and talked to you for everything that I've done for the, the build. I told you about the wheels. There's those wheels. They needed to be changed because the, the smaller ones just collapsed. There must be a lot of weight. Maybe there's 400 kilos here, perhaps. I don't know. So we showed you the exhaust and it's totally mobile, it actually moves easier on the bigger wheels. You can actually move it a lot. The smaller wheels are grounding out and it just didn't feel right. This moves around really nicely. Fire extinguisher on the front, as I said, just in case anything goes up. Each night we disconnect the battery lead and screw the cap on the petrol and put that well away from the, the setup. Talked about the ballast wire there in the video as well and how that helps you to start when the engine's cold and when it's cranking how that gives a boost to the 9 volt ballasted coil check that okay so we look now for rattling bolts anything loose we go, okay that's the air cleaner one I've just nipped that up because I'm waiting for the air cleaner to go on no leaks now coming from those clips nothing over pressuring temperature staying into the normal range everything looking good nothing no oil dripping down at the bottom no no noises or hisses or anything like that so initially no disasters we need to give this a couple of hours running and then we can say that engine's in the in the where we want to be we'll then cover the engine up it's ready to go into the car anything else that needs doing fine tuning will be done in the engine bay itself we just needed to make sure that everything was fine for that which which it is so we can now call it a day as the uh, the day draws to a close one more fire up with the air filter on and then it's over and out and we'll see you in part 36 and thanks for this hope you enjoyed the show before i go i do really miss straight away not being in this little cozy little uh, workshop i don't like being outside there um, i'm in next door's uh, storage unit to let me just start the engine in the stores uh, self storage place there, very kind of next door to help me with that, appreciate it um, but I'd like to be back in here oh, no, I don't know, that's where I like to work <laughs> no, I, I, mean, I can lock the door, I've got all my little bits and bits and bobs that I like I just, I need to come back in here, I want to do so, I want another engine I want, I want another engine in here now 
I suppose I've got to have to just finish this off. We need to finish the power steering, don't we? Maybe we'll put that in 36. We need to finish this off. I'll tell you what I'll do for 36 for you. I'll put this alongside the engine and I'll connect the power steering pump pipes into this and we'll try turning this and see if it goes and does the power steering and we can check for any leaks so a live power steering check I think for 36 and some other stuff some tidying up and we may even get the dashboard back and start an electronics bench over here this looks a good place to put the electronics bench now and we can start building our systems because there's our systems we need to take a trip to the body shop some requests coming in can we see more body shop stuff well the paint guy's had a hernia he's off work and delayed me right so there's nothing i can do i can't say that i just I only wish him well and health comes first every time so there's no point worrying about it all you can do is say well you know it's not a serious illness i'm hoping that you know the operation's gone okay for him but he's just recovering and that's my main paint guy he says he'll get on it as soon as he can. He's saying August. We'll see. If it is August, you can bet I'll be there with a the camera filming the body paint. If there's no body paint, and if I've nothing to report, I don't want to bore you crazy with my tech stuff, but I could put a warning at the beginning of part 36 if it includes heavy tech. You don't have to watch if you don't want to, but we appreciate all comments and views that are coming in i am now scanning the floor as i give you the commentary looking for the air cleaner because we want to hear the engine just that little bit quieter and we can leave you something to fade out on okay let's uh, re-record and not fade away come find that air cleaner it's in a I know why I like my units because I can have my radio on out in the self storage place they don't let you play any music in here you can for our planet rock this goes out this goes out guys I haven't got a air cleaner in the in the uh, filter pan box so it's not going to sound as quiet as we thought because we're not running an air cleaner on it but just for the hell of it one last time all right so it's over and out from pinto land hope you enjoyed thanks for watching again if you're not subscribed get on there hit that button and uh, thanks for everyone who comments and anyone who watchers who's not subscribed thank you as well it doesn't really matter but if you can hit the button thanks to fuzz as well for uh, entertaining us uh, one of the days he was here or i was there and um all of that stuff is superb we'll see you in 36 hope you enjoyed this short little clip probably half an hour maybe 40 minutes let's see how it comes out in the edit it's uh, good night from me and we'll see you soon thank you very much everybody hope you enjoyed the pinto startup part 35 over and out good night oh, i hope you had a good time building the engine jim we got it fired up and working and look what's happened to you <laughs> jim got we the engine it worked it started yeah! The engine yeah. started, oh, Pinto, oh, Pinto, oh, Pinto. Oh, the oh, engine oh, started, oh, the engine oh, started. Oh, 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 <laughs> the engine started. Oh, uh, the engine started, the engine started. Yeah. <laughs> it hasn't started yet, but this is ahead in case it yeah. does. Yeah. We know it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Oh, I told you he'd buy it. Pull it. Um, yum, 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 yum. <laughs> Um, yum, yum. <laughs> You're gonna regret this. <laughs> yeah. I don't give a shit because I've had a beer. <laughs> what is it? Is it been Cortina Day today, Jim? Cortina Day. Absolutely great. We didn't win any prizes. Who gives a bugger? We did win a prize. We might have won the prize. No, I did win a prize. I did win a prize. I won. No, I had to fill. Up. I had to fill some sacks. <laughs> Ten sacks. Not to fill and guess, and I have everyone, including Pierre. I won. Hey, that was part of it. All done. Yeah. <laughs> even, even, even there. Uh, Ian's going to be on this part 34. It's amazing. Here's the problem. Here's the mathematical, physical problem. Beer, lots of. Three <laughs> sandwiches. <laughs> it's all gone quite uh, pubish. <laughs>
tonight we don't know what's happening, do we? Probably lag involved. Lager's probably involved somewhere. Yeah, definitely have a lager. But yeah, I'm just grounding myself through this concrete at the moment. Yeah, it's that's good. Old. Okay, you look a bit vulnerable there, Pete. Um, you could get you could get trodden. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we wait for the there's a train coming. Yeah. <laughs> there's a train. Here coming. it comes. <laughs> 